I mean, Satan's not through. He actually hits Eve repeatedly with wave after wave. Look down in verse four. Notice what he says in verse four. Um, Eve talks to him a little bit, which she shouldn't have even started, but she goes on, and she says, you shall not eat of it, verse three, nor shall you touch it lest you die. Little addition there. It, the Bible didn't say don't touch it, but, but she was just maybe even looking at it and wishing for it and saying you shouldn't even touch it. I don't know. And then the serpent said to the woman, you, in verse four, you will not surely die. Directly opposing what God said. And what Satan wants us to do is to doubt God, and we doubt God when we doubt his authority. And Satan wants us to believe that God is not in charge, that we are in charge, and God isn't interested in what we choose, that we're in charge of our choices, and God will never make us accountable for our deeds because we're in charge. And that's just Satan's constant drumbeat. And it's a direct attack on the character of God because one of the great truths about God is the moral attribute we know that he is sovereign and he is the absolute and final authority on everything and anything and always. And we either bow and submit and obey or as Jesus said, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. You will not surrender to my word. You will not be my sheep to hear my voice and know me and follow me. You're following your own way, not me. A Christian follows Christ, an unsaved person goes their own way. And that's, there's only two, two settings. Having the son, following him, not having the son, not following him. And it goes on. The final one we'll look at this morning, and you can read the rest of the chapter because that's what we're studying all week in our small groups. Doubting God's plan, what he says in verse five, for God knows that when you do what he's trying to keep from you, that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God and you will know good and evil. He says, I want you to doubt God. And we doubt God when we doubt his plan. And Satan wants us to believe that there's a better way to immortality, an easier way to heaven, a quicker way to happiness. And again, this is attack on the very word of God. God said, my word is sufficient. That's one of the attributes God has given to his word. It's sufficient. It is complete. It's, it's what we need. It's all that we need for two things. In fact, the sufficiency of God's word means that the word of God is everything God wants to tell us about how we should think about a particular doctrinal issue or what we should do in a particular situation that's found in the scripture. And what is in the scripture that's doctrine and situations that, that God has dictated our response, those contain everything we need to know. Now the Bible's not exhaustive. It doesn't tell you how to, you know, change the oil, you know, in your, in your, you know, model plane that you fly around, your hobby plane. It doesn't have, it's not a manual. It's everything we need about doctrine and about our response to situations that God addresses in life. And it's sufficient. And so... God has a wonderful and perfect plan. He has revealed it in his word. And every time we open the word, we hear his plan. The question is not, does God speak? The question is, do we listen? Are we listening to him? Are we wanting his plan? And that's a daily choice. That's part of wanting his protection, knowing his plan, knowing what he wants. He wants. 